So in this video, I want to set up Hyper-V Replica. And I basically want to create a replica of this specific virtual machine to a second Hyper-V server. Now these Hyper-V servers aren't clustered. And obviously the goal of Hyper-V Replica is really for disaster recovery. So there would maybe only be one network connection between them. So the first thing I actually have to do is on the target, the Replica Hyper-V server, I actually have to go into my Hyper-V settings and set up my replica configuration. So I need to enable it for replication. I'm gonna use Kerberos, and they're part of the same Active Directory file, so I can use Kerberos. If I wanted encryption, I could use certificate-based authentication or if they weren't part of the domain. I can specify if I wanna allow replication from any server, or I'm gonna actually add just from a specific server. So SavDAL, Hyper-V01. Specify a folder. And then a trust group. Just a name that I want to basically create these under. And that's it. That's basically now I'm enabled as a replica server. Because I'm using HTTP, it's saying make sure that firewall exception is enabled. So if I wanted to double check that, I could jump over to my other box. I can actually go onto here, control panel, my firewall. that in my inbound rules. So this is the Hyper-V Replica HTTP listener in. So I'm gonna enable that rule. So again, if I was using port 443, I would enable it for HTTPS, but I'm just doing port 80. So this server should now be able to accept the replica request. So now on my primary, I'm gonna right click the VM I want to replicate say enable replication. I specify the replica server. I'm saying to use Kerberos. It's not configured, that target is not configured for cert certificate, so I have to use Kerberos HTTP. I'm gonna say yes, I wanna compress the data. Now that means it's gonna use some more resources for that compression and decompression, but it will use less network. I want to replicate all the virtual hard disks for that virtual machine. So this is um, recovery point. So normally, I would only be able to restore to that last replication. But maybe what I want to do is enable some additional recovery points so I can go to various different points in time in the past for this replication. So I want, let's say, four additional recovery points. And I would like a VSS replication and so I've got it set to every four hours. So I'm gonna reduce that down, let's say every three hours. So basically what that means is every three hours, it will actually issue a VSS effective backup within that virtual machine. So it will make sure everything's nice and consistent on disk. And at that point, it will send another replica over to the target and label that one as an app consistent snapshot. So if you can imagine in a disaster scenario, I'm replicating every five minutes, a disaster happens, I try and start the replica and the data is in an inconsistent state. I could go and select the snapshot that's created on there that says, hey, this is actually for this VSS, and I know it's an app consistent so that I know the data would be good. I'm gonna initially copy over the network, but I could also do it to external media. I'm gonna start replication immediately. I could have pre-placed the data on the replica server and say finish. And if I go and select the replication tab, I'll actually start to see it's sending that initial replica. And if I actually go and look at my networks, it's 
throwing it over basically. <laughs> so it's copying over the network. It's my management NICs, that's the basically the top NIC in my list. And on my target server, I'll see that VM has been created. It's gonna be off. It's currently seeding, it's that initial replication. And what it's actually doing behind the scenes is it's actually placing that there. So it's just doing that initial seed right now. And we'll come back to this once it's finished. So this initial replication is just finishing up now. We can see it's just sending the last bits of data. It's actually now completed, sending over the network. It's finalizing some details on the target server. And then, so it did that initial copy. And then during the copy, changes happened, so it sent over the, the deltas. And now it's saying the replication is enabled. If I go over to my other box, you can now see those disks have completed. I have the full VHD, the differencing disks get sent over and merged in. And now if I look at that replica, Obviously it's off, this is an asynchronous replication, it's replicating the storage. All I can see right now is that initial replica, but what I'll start to see is those previous point in time snapshots. And also I'm going to need to wait a while for that initial VSS. But I can now come in, I can look at that virtual machine, I can look at the settings. And because it is a replica, I have access to the file over TCP IP configuration. So I could actually configure that VM to have an alternate IP configuration when it's activated. And that would actually inject itself into that guest virtual machines configuration for our integration services. So that was it. That was configuring a replica. And what I'll actually do is, so that, that's up and running. I'll come back to this much later to actually show you what those additional snapshots look like and I'll actually wait until we see one that has uh, an application consistent, so one of those VSS snapshots taken within it. So I've actually just waited for this to finish and literally it's now been three hours. So you can see every hour it's created, because I selected the option to have various point in time replicas, if I ever had to fail over, I could fail over to various points in time. And the last one, every three hours I selected, is an application consistent replica. So this was one where the VSS writers within the virtual machine were called, and then it synchronized the changes over. So I know in a disaster, at least every three hours, I have this application consistent. One thing I didn't point out originally, obviously one thing I would likely want to do is, if I did fail over, I would want to be able to fail back, which means on my original server, I would also want to enable it to be possible as a replica. So I would want to configure that option so it can fail back again. And I would actually add in all the servers. So I want to be able to replicate from Zavdal Hyper V02. Where I wanted to replicate it to by default. Now if I'm failing back, it will go to the original location, but I could specify default location. I don't remember what I called the original group. Replica, replica group one, okay. I'll give it the same name. So now if I needed to, I could fail back, providing I obviously I, I go and enable that firewall exception within there. So that was it, that was Replica and it's up and running, thank you.